Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supplies. In this video we're going to show you how to change out the clutch. It's going to be a very easy repair. It should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it from AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the kit, you're going to get the instructions, the clutch assembly, the brake cam driver, an extra spring depending upon your model number, the retaining ring, and a bearing. The main reason you'd be changing out the clutch is if the clutch shoes wore out and it's causing excessive noise or it can cause the tub not to spin up to full speed and your clothes come out of the spin cycle still soaking wet. First we have to go ahead and open up the washer lid to gain access to the inside of the washer. We have to go ahead and remove the fabric dispenser. Our particular model will just pull this off. Other fabric dispensers may have a lock ring that you have to pull up on to disengage and then lift up on the fabric dispenser and then there's probably going to be a cap underneath it. You'll have to pry off the cap with a flathead screwdriver. Most models have a dust cap. We need to pull it out so we can get to the agitator bolt. If the dust cap seal is damaged, you should order a new one from AppliancePartsPros.com. Underneath the dust cap is the inner agitator assembly and the agitator hold down bolt. So grab your 7 16 inch socket with a long extension. When you first start to take out the bolt, it may be a little tight, so you have to reach down inside the tub and hold the lower agitator while you break it free. Once you feel that the bolt is all the way out of the threads, lift the agitator out of the washer. Some models, once you take the agitator off, have the little retaining clip and a plastic piece down in here. So just grab your pliers and pull that off and then lift the plastic piece off. We need to remove the fill hoses so we can lay the machine down. Grab your channel locks and break them free. Once you have them loose, you can just turn them by hand. We can remove the clamp, just grab it with your pliers, slide it up a little bit on the hose, and pull the hose off this uh, white fitting. We're going to have to lay the machine on its back for this repair, so go ahead and grab a towel and put it down on the floor to protect the floor from the washer. When you're putting the washer down, it's very heavy, so get some help if you need it. Now that we have the machine laid down, we have access to the underside of the machine so we can do the repair. First thing we have to do is get the pump out of the way. It's held in by these two clips that we can pry off with our flathead screwdriver. Once you get them off, just turn them 90 degrees and the bottoms will come out of the motor. There's one on the bottom and one on the top. Once we have these out of the way, you can lift the pump off the motor and swing it up out of the way. We have to disconnect the electrical connection to the motor. It's held in by this little tab that you can lift up on with a flathead screwdriver and pull the wire connector off. Then we have to remove the wiring harness from the gear case mount. So you take a flathead screwdriver, pry this little clamp out, and get the wires out of there. The gear case is held in by three bolts. Half inch. Go ahead and remove them all. Before we remove the gear case, we'll lay a towel on the floor. It's probably going to have some oil on it. Now that we have everything disconnected, we can pull the gear case out. In order to get the clutch off, we have to first remove this washer. Then we have to remove this retaining clip that you can pry off with a flathead screwdriver. It just slides into a couple slots on the side of the shaft. We have to reuse that. And then we have to remove this little retaining ring, which you can just get with a flathead screwdriver and pop it out. This one you get a new one so you don't need to save it. 
Once we have those three pieces off, you can just lift the old clutch off the transmission. Here's the old clutch next to the new clutch. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it from appliancepartspros.com. They give you two different springs for your clutch depending upon your model. So if you have one that you have to switch the spring out, what you have to do is grab your clutch with the channel locks right here on the actual brake shoes, squeeze this together, and pull this out, and then spread it apart a little bit, take the old spring out, put the new spring in, and then do the same thing, compress it and put it back into the clutch housing. Now you're set up for the other style. Before we put the new clutch on, we have to put the new spacer bearing in. It just lines up in the four little tabs and gets pushed into place. Now that we have that on, we can put it back on the shaft. Okay, now we can put in the retaining ring, which goes around the shaft and hooks in this hole in the clutch, and then has to go behind these four retaining clips. Once you get them in there on the other side, just lock it in place with the screwdriver. Next thing that has to go on is the retaining clip. Just slides in the slots on the shaft and pushes into place. Then we have to put on the washer. When you push this down on the shaft, make sure that these little tabs go into the open spots so it sits all the way down. If you push it down in this area, it won't seat properly. See the difference? Also included in the clutch kit is the brake cam driver. You should change it out also. They're considered a set, so make sure you do it both. To get the old one out, we have to take our small screwdriver and get behind this little seat clip here and pull it off the cam. Once you have that, all you have to do is pull the old one off, put the new one back on. These two tabs go in the groove right here to lock it in place. So when you're pushing it on, make sure it's in the groove. Before we put the gear case back in, we have to make sure that the brake cam driver in the clutch spring are lined up opposite. Otherwise, when you put them in, the brake cam will hit the spring and it won't go in all the way. Now that we have the gear case reassembled, we can go ahead and put it back into the machine. When you push it down onto the mounting legs, they have little lips on them. So once you seat it, you don't have to worry about it falling off. Now we can put in the bolts that hold the gear case in. Next we can reroute the wiring harness through the wire harness clip. So get the wires in there and press it together to lock it. Plug the wiring harness back into the motor and then making sure that it locks into place. Okay, we're going to put the pump back in. We're going to put the rear bracket in first to make it easier. Once the pump's on the motor, it's kind of hard to get that back in there, so we're just going to lay it in the back like that. And then we'll go ahead and grab the pump and swing it back over the motor. Make sure you look at the flats on the shaft in the pump. The motor may have turned. You may have to adjust it so the pump slides back on right. Once you have it down, reach down and snap that rear clip on, and then do the front one. Okay, we have everything reinstalled. Make sure you get the washer up onto its feet as soon as possible so no oil drains out of the gear case. Now that we're done with repair, we can lift the machine back up on its feet. Make sure you get somebody to help you. The machine's very heavy. To install the hoses, carefully thread them onto the water valve. Make sure you don't cross thread them and strip the valve, otherwise you'll have to replace that. Tighten it down by hand and then snug it down with your channel locks. 
to install the drain line, just push it onto the white fitting until it seats. And then grab your pliers and move the clamp down into the clamp section. There's actually two lines on this hose that has the word clamp in between it that tells you where to put the clamp. So make sure it's right there so it gets held on properly. Now that you have the machine reassembled, you can go ahead and plug it back in, turn the water back on, and take it for a test spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.